For 2021, the Volkswagen Atlas has a bolder front and rear style with some updates inside as well. This is a mid-cycle refresh for this 2021 Atlas, and today we have the top end SEL Premium R-Line. We're gonna take a full detailed look at everything, the outside, the inside, the cargo space, and go for a test drive. Let's get started. This SEL Premium R-Line is the top trim level for this 2021 Volkswagen Atlas, and this refresh gives us the same underpinnings of last year, but a little bit more aggressive design up front and with the rear bumpers. Up front, you'll find its three-bar grille that runs into its signature LED headlights and LED daytime running lights, and it doesn't have fog lights, but it has all-weather lights integrated in. Plus, new for 2021, we get bright, adaptive front lighting on the SEL and SEL Premium that actually corner into turns. The R-Line gives you specific, sportier bumpers compared to the rest of them, and this racing green exterior paint is a nice paint. It's got a metallic flake in it, looks very dark and almost black sometimes, but it goes well with the bulky designs and large fenders on this Atlas. This R-Line gives us massive 21-inch wheels, and you'll even have a little side skirt on this R-Line in between those. The mirrors are power folding, heated, have reverse tilting function, but no dimming function. Roof rails will be standard and the dimensions are actually a little bit bigger, about two and a half inches bigger than last year at 200.7 inches and eight inches of ground clearance. In the back, you'll find full LED taillights, including that blinker and an R-Line specific bumper with glossy black paint. As we move to the cargo area, the space of the Atlas really shows when you look at how much cargo space you get behind each row. So on our model, and several other lower models, you actually get the hands-free lift gate where you can just swipe your foot and it will lower down. And like I said, space is really good. Behind the third row, you get about 20 and a half cubic feet. Good space, good enough for luggage and carry-ons, plus a couple of hooks and tie-downs and a 12-volt power outlet. Fold the next row down and you get about 55 and a half cubic feet and the seats are really flat and low. And then when you fold the second row down with all these seats folded, you get 96.8 cubic feet and it's really flat, nice, low, nice area for animals, loading stuff. It's just really flat and very practical. Under this floor, there's also a little extra room for cargo area and there's a spare tire under here. My only couple complaints are that there's no power option at all to lower any of these seats down and you can't lower the second row down without going to the second row. At this $50,000 plus price point, I would expect that to be available. And the other thing is you cannot swipe your foot or do the hands-free action to lower it down like you can on some competitors and the button inside that opens this lift gate does not close it neither does the key fob so you can't power close this gate unless you push this button which is a very small inconvenience but something that i kind of expected otherwise this is so spacious you could totally camp and lay down back here whatever you want to do now under the hood of the 2021 atlas there's actually a change compared to the 2020 model now for 2021, you can get that four cylinder turbo on any trim level. Before it was just reserved for certain trims, but now you can get it on any trim if you want. I personally wouldn't because I like this V6. One reason is that that four cylinder turbo, I drove it in a base S model and it just felt too underpowered for this size of a vehicle. And it was not very efficient considering its small engine displacement. But under the hood right here, we've got the direct injected 3.6 liter VR6 on the SE Tech model or higher optional, 276 horsepower, 266 pound feet of torque with an eight speed automatic. Those numbers are not mind blowing. They're actually kind of low for this class, but the torque actually comes out really early, all things considered. So we'll talk about that in the test drive. This is a little bit punchier than you might expect. Miles per gallon just stinks no matter which Atlas you go for, especially this V6 all-wheel drive. This gets 16 in the city, 22 on the highway, and 18 combined. Those are the same kind of numbers you'll see in much bigger, more capable, and more powerful vehicles like the Ford Expedition, Chevy Tahoe, those kinds of vehicles. And if you're gonna tow, this is rated at 5,000 pounds. Volkswagen gives us the smart key system. It is a slim and has a nice material type of key fob with even some metal up top. You also get remote, spot, remote start and you can open up the rear lift gate. So the way that theirs works is that you have a line here to lock it and the mirror will fold automatically power folding or you can stick your hand back there and use the sensor. And I like that Volkswagen even has it on the rear doors too. So you can lock it with that or use the sensor on the back of the rear door too. Getting in here is really easy too because of the ride height. It's just perfect middle ride height, easy to slide in, except 
we don't have the entry exit system that we find on other models. Except we don't have the entry exit system where the seat will automatically move forward or backwards when you're getting in or out like you find on other three row competitors. The seats that we have here are 10 way power adjustable with two way lumbar support, full leather, even with some contrast stitching. I like this dark and light brown. They're comfortable seats, good bolstering without being aggressive and nice and soft. These seats also come heated and with ventilation and they have memory settings for the driver. I've had no complaints with these seats. They've been comfortable all around. No complaints at all, except this passenger seat does not have lumbar support. I would like to see that at 50 plus thousand dollars. And to top it off, our steering wheel is leather wrapped and it's also heated on the SEL trim and higher. And it's got manual adjustment, no power adjustment, but it's got a really good range of motion. There's tons of space in here. Headroom is really good. I'm five foot nine, so I've got tons of headroom, but six foot and over, you should still be quite comfortable in here. The second row of the Atlas actually comes with the bench seat standard on every single trim level, but captain's chairs are optional. And it's important to note that the Atlas is at maximum a seven passenger vehicle instead of an eight passenger vehicle. If you have the bench seat, you have seven seats available. If you have the captain's chairs, you have six seats available because the third row only seats two people, unlike three, like many competitors. Now, I love the fact that Volkswagen gives us this bench seat on any trim level, because some of the vehicles I've seen recently, they give you only certain seat configurations with different trim levels. So thank you, Volkswagen, for offering this on any trim. This back seat is really spacious. I mean, sitting behind myself, I've got good leg space, good knee space. You could easily have somebody riding in the middle and still have good space. We get a center folding armrest with cup holders, good headroom, and with this panoramic roof, LED lights back here, even get the sunshade on each side, which is nice. And then in front of us, we've got AC vents, your own climate control, heated outboard seats, and extra charging ports below. And to top it off, this seat can slide forward and backwards. This 60% section and the 40% section, and it can even recline quite a ways. So there's a lot of space back here and it is nice and comfortable. Now hopping into the third row, it's not the simplest way of getting in for children if they're gonna go to the third row, but you can pull this lever and the seat will kind of just automatically kick out of the way. Then you can give it a little bit of a shove to get a bigger area to get through. One benefit to that is without you having to push it, you can knock it out of the way for some extra space, even with car seats here. So you can have three car seats in the second row and still be able to move it out of the way to get to the third row. But then it's a little bit wonky once you get back here. You can pull it back part way, but then it stops. So you kind of got to mess with that in order to get it back, which is annoying. But obviously, as you can see, this seat is all the way back and my knees are into it. I cannot sit back here. But if you even move it forward a little bit, you'd be able to have enough space. And if you have the captain's chairs, obviously you'll have a little bit more leg room. But this third row is definitely usable with that second row forward a little bit. It's really great to see for kids or pets back here, you have air conditioning vents on both sides. Plus you get these little cup holders back here on both sides. I think the big news is that I can sit in the third row and just have my hair touching. So I don't have to worry about my head running into the ceiling. Taking a look at the rest of the interior, it's not quite as nice, you could say, as some of the competitors, but it's still very functional. Classic Volkswagen, clean and functional. We get push button start down there, foot on the brake, press start, and then our digital display shows up. And I'll show you that a little bit later. Now, first thing, right on the door, you've got a blend of materials. You have a nicer material up here that you could rest your arm on. You've got this material with the stitching down here. You have some trim accents there. A really nice big armrest. I definitely appreciate that big armrest. All automatic one-touch windows. You can even power fold and adjust your mirrors there. You have a really big storage pocket and a huge area for a bottle. Light controls are right over here and you actually pull that to access your all weather lights. Not fog lights, but they're all weather lights. They're within the actual headlight housing. You got a little storage cubby down here that you could use for different things. And one quick note is that rain sensing windshield wipers, they don't say automatic on that stock, but automatic rain sensing wipers are standard on every single trim, which I love that feature. So you don't have to mess around with the perfect speed all the time. 
Another quick note is that there are actually four different driver profiles that you can have. You can set it up in your screen so that each driver can have their own individual custom settings uh, for like your seat, temperature, the way the gauges look and all of that stuff. The steering wheel is really comfortable. You even have a flat bottom wheel. You've got this kind of semi perforated leather material on the sides. All of the buttons here work pretty well and they're pretty easy to use. Little sport grips and it is also heated. So very nice steering wheel. You won't find a head-up display up there, but that's okay. We have this large 10-inch digital display called Volkswagen's Digital Cockpit. This is entirely digital, and you can change everything you see. Now, don't look at the MPGs. I just basically sat here and moved in the parking lot, so don't worry about that. But in the middle, you can change and customize settings through there. You can change the entire view. So let's go ahead and change our view here. That was driver assist. Uh, you can have your phone you can have audio navigation you can have an entire map of navigation and then you can have your other settings or your other information on the sides this is a really cool system um, you're you have so many different options for all of your trip computer information so you can have all that in the middle on the sides you can make it with the regular gauges so you kind of have more of a traditional look or you can have it just in the middle so it's less distracting. The more I'm around this display, the more I like it. Now up above, you do get a softer material on the dash, if any of you care about that. And then you have the same soft material up here with a really large cubby area, good for wallet, sunglasses, stuff that you don't want to slide around, or it can be in the sun. Nice to see that. And then you actually have an integrated display. You don't always see the integration anymore. A lot of times you see the tablet style, so I'd like to see which one you prefer. And there are some changes here. 2021 models, this is the same, but 2021 and a half models actually get the third generation software and infotainment. This one still has the same second generation in infotainment. But as you can see, we have Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. It takes up the entire screen, which is an eight inch screen. I'm a little surprised we don't find a bigger touch screen in here. I'm sure they'll roll that out next time, but the screen does work well. It's capacitive touch. It's very responsive. Um, I've really got no complaints with it in terms of how to use it and how responsive it is. You can see the stuff at the bottom. If I bring my hands close, it'll pop up. So it kind of responds to you as you get closer. There are different settings you can customize for the vehicle, your sound controls. Um, even navigation, the way that looks on here, a lot of stuff that you can customize. And speaking of sound, we actually have the Fender 12 speaker, 480 watt audio system. That does sound pretty good in here. All of the shortcuts on the sides, like radio, media, phone, all that is actual touchscreen. These buttons, the volume and tuning knob are real knobs. We get dual zone climate control down here, and this is where things look a little bit dated, but you've got heated, ventilated seats, easy layout, easy to control up here. Auto stop start button is right there. And let's look at our screen. If we go in reverse, we've got this top down camera. So you can have regular backup camera. You can have your top down view. Check it out. <laughs> you can even, it's, we have parking system in here too that I'll show you in a little bit. So that's kind of cool. Look, it's like even boxing that in right now. If you have a trailer, you got trailer hitch. We have front and rear parking sensors as well. So everything works pretty well on here this just is not as customizable or there's not as many like close quarter views as there are on some vehicles right below that we get a nice large storage area with a rubber liner right here so stuff isn't going to slide around a couple usb ports uh, auxiliary port and a 12 volt power outlet down here this center console the shifter has a really nice feel to it you can shift down into the uh, plus and minus here to actually manually shift or double down to go into sport mode remote start or push button start parking brake and then our drive modes right here so first we're in normal mode and then you also have a snow mode and then we can go over to an off-road mode and when we're in normal mode we can toggle between all these eco normal sport custom and we'll go through those in the test drive down here you have your overhead view camera and parking sonar button and then we actually have park assist where it will parallel or perpendicular park for you it will steer for you but you have to brake and accelerate volkswagen did an excellent job with this armrest it's long it's padded it's wide it's far enough up to where you could probably have your elbow on there like that it sits a little low and you cannot lift it up 
but it's a nice big armrest and you've just got a huge massive opening right here and a usb port inside of there this one did not come with a tray that sits in there if you own one please let me know if they come with one there's a locking glove box right here and even spots for sd cards and a cd player get an automatic dimming rear view mirror up above plus we do not have a dedicated sunglass holder here you could use any of the different cubbies around here to do that led interior lighting and then check it out we've got this panoramic roof and it's a pretty big panoramic roof with two different panes this front part will open the glass otherwise you have a nice view out the back and a quick look at visibility visibility is really not too bad in here blind spot indicators are also standard on every trim in those mirrors looking out the back pretty typical three row suv but the windows really aren't too bad of size and at night you get white ambient lighting in different areas with all white backlit buttons as well which makes it a pretty nice place to be at night all right everyone let's get rolling on the test drive in this volkswagen atlas so in this drive i'm going to give you my first impressions of this atlas i have driven the turbo version of the atlas so i'll kind of reference back to the difference of the turbo versus this v6 but i want to talk about ride comfort how it handles just driving it on a daily basis and what kind of things you can expect so first of all we're just in normal driving mode and my first impression just kind of my first little pet peeve of the atlas is the way that the steering feels it's really lightweight which can come in handy in some situations like for example parking lots uh things low speed maneuvering things like that but it just almost gives you a false sense of direction or amount of force to use with it it just has an odd feel but let's go ahead and get on it a little So for the most part, this powertrain, the engine and transmission has been smooth. The power from this engine has been very responsive. And I apologize for the rain. It just started raining. Um, and uh, I have the rain sensing windshield wipers on, so you'll kind of get to see how well those work. But with this engine, you really don't need to put a lot of pedal into it to get a good response from it, especially at low speeds. So like city driving, uh, just taking off from a stoplight it's really quick to respond the, the pedal is actually kind of touchy touchier than i was expecting which is kind of nice for a naturally aspirated big vehicle like this now as opposed to the turbo when you put the pedal down pretty much right after you get the rpms up a little bit you start to get a boost in the back right away as far as city driving that's probably a little bit more ideal uh, highway driving the naturally aspirated is a little more ideal in terms of like passing power and things like that but either way i mean you're gonna have some power but i would definitely go for this v6 even though it still isn't quite as powerful as some competitors now i complained about the steering feel and i don't really like it it still feels really lightweight and almost kind of flimsy at a higher speed like this um, but it's it is a little bit better when we are going faster speeds I wouldn't necessarily say it's difficult to keep it centered in its lane um, but it's a little bit too flimsy for me now in terms of ride comfort a couple quick notes in that first Atlas the base S model that I reviewed that had significantly smaller wheels and larger profile tires which will give you a little bit of a softer ride this model has the 21 inch wheels which are massive so the tires there's not a lot of tire there with such a huge wheel to where you can get a little bit of a bumpier ride this is a stiffer bumpier ride just a more noticeably jittery ride compared to that one so it's not bad it's still okay but it is more bumpy i guess bumpier than i was expecting now i'm gonna go ahead and put it in sport mode let's put it in uh, off-road mode Okay, we are now in sport mode. Let's go ahead and get pedal, pedal down. And it's certainly not the quickest of the bunch uh, when you look at some other three rows, but I haven't really been able to show you yet at the low speeds but at low speeds i mean it's just still at in town driving it's still fairly punchy 
the body roll in here isn't bad. I mean, there is some, but Volkswagens generally do handle and drive pretty well, with the exception that this does have a little bit more bumpiness to it. But let's change the views, get those gauge clusters in here. And this sport mode is still holding the RPM. So, I mean, passing power is okay in here. The engine and the transmission has been pretty responsive and, and smooth. This eight-speed transmission has not been as clunky as some other transmissions that I've tested recently. There we go. Gonna put it back just in uh, normal mode. Eco mode will definitely dull your throttle response down. Um, this does have, now I didn't really talk about this yet, but Volkswagen gives you quite a bit of the standard safety features. The adaptive cruise control and lane keeping system is optional on some trims, uh, not the lower trims, but we have both of those here and they've worked well. It's not um, the best in class, but it's not bad either. Uh, so if you want the adaptive cruise lane keeping system, you can get that with this Volkswagen Atlas. Now, so kind of a quick little summary is that the steering feels a little bit wonky, a little bit touchy, feels over boosted, I guess you could say. Uh, braking feels fine on here. This is kind of a bigger vehicle, but the braking seems to be okay in that regard. One thing that I want to complain about a little bit is the, uh, the noise in here. It's not bad, but even on our top trim level, these are not double pane glass, so you don't have the acoustic laminated glass that helps to suppress wind noise. Um, and on my, my decibel rating test, it was okay, but not great. I would like to see it be a little bit improved. And at a stop here, ergonomically, I like driving this Volkswagen. I like the way everything feels, the where, where everything is, storage, cup holders, armrests, visibility is fine, storage areas. I mean, everything just works fine in here. So daily driving, there's no concerns with that. This gauge cluster is nice and clear. The screen is easy to see with minimal glaring. And we're gonna get on a rougher textured road here. And you can probably hear some of that extra noise. It's not bad but compared to some of the recent three rows I've been in, it is a little louder than some of those. So one area that they could improve a little bit, but I think the biggest draw to this Volkswagen is the space. It's got a very nice open feel. It is practical in here. It's an easy vehicle to drive around. And most of you looking for a three row will feel pretty much right at home in this Volkswagen Atlas as far as driving it. Now let's go ahead and wrap things up. So to wrap things up on this 2021 Volkswagen Atlas, obviously they made some styling revisions on the outside, but they actually made it a little bit bigger too because of that. So it makes it a little bit more difficult to actually park this thing. The inside is very much the same, but it is still functional Volkswagen and there's not a whole lot to complain about with that. On the flip side at about $51,000 for this top end model, there's still a few things that I feel like could be better or nicer when you look at some of the recent competitors upgrades. But in the end, this is still a very spacious and practical three row SUV that could suit a lot of families. So leave your thoughts down below what you think of this 2021 Atlas. Did Volkswagen do enough? Do you like it as it is? Leave your comments down below. Hit that thumbs up button if you like this video and found it helpful. Tap the thumbs down button twice if you didn't like it and subscribe for more reviews. Have a great day.